Hey guys, it's Julia and welcome back to my channel and for today I have a really exciting video for you guys. serious and exciting but I'm excited to bring it to you guys and discuss it a little bit. As long as I've been making my channel I've been mentioning trigger warnings when I talk about a certain book so for example I'll hold up Under Rose Tainted Skies and I'll say this has trigger warnings for agoraphobia, self-harm, anxiety, and depression and then I'll carry on with what the book is about and my review. So I try to do that for most books I read. Honestly I don't always state trigger warnings. I try my best but I, I do try to state them and I'm going to be making more of an effort going forward to state those. But I have received questions about, I've been asked questions about what what the hell those are, what what is a trigger warning, um, why do I give them, and what's the point? So I thought I would address it in this video today and as well I have some other YouTubers in this video that have sent me a clip of them and personally why they believe in trigger warnings and what they consider to be a trigger warning and why kind of thing. So this is a really important video to me and I really hope you guys find it informative and get a new insight from other people and yeah. So for me a trigger warning is a warning preceding before going into a book. Um, trigger warnings are for shows and movies as well, but if we're talking about books, trigger warnings are something that's going to occur in the book, a theme that's going to happen in the book that readers should know before reading. The reason why is because if that reader has been through a certain type of trauma, um, has just like dealt with a disorder, it's in recovery for an eating disorder for an example, things like that, a book that describes a panic attack in depth could trigger the reader to have a panic attack is kind of what that means. The word triggered is often used as when you're uncomfortable, it's become kind of slang. Like when someone like says something about your appearance, you're like, oh I'm so triggered, like mm. but in all seriousness, it's usually something so you feel something in a book, but not a good thing. Basically, what can be considered a trigger warning? Usually it's anxiety, depression, self-harm, death is usually one as well. It's usually one that I don't mention. I feel like a lot of books deal with death, but it probably should still be noted. Um, usually mental health issues are trigger warnings, but there is some for like for sexual assault and rape and things like that, which it's so important. It's so important for readers. I've read some pretty intense books that I've had to really take it easy reading them because of the triggering content in them, like Under Rose Tainted Skies by Louise Gornell, which I love. It's one of the books that I really hold dear, dear to my heart, but the anxiety scenes, the panic scenes um, really resonated with me and were painful to read at times. And that's why those trigger warnings are so important because you have to be in the right phase of your recovery or in the right phase of your life to read about that and yeah and it's not even just if the reader themselves struggles with this what like it's if it hits close to home um for example a book dealing with suicide it may not affect the reader particularly but maybe it could in relation to one of their family members or some like some thoughts that they've had themselves, things like that. So that's why it's so important. Hi, I'm Rebecca from the channel Becca's Book Club, and Julia has asked me to talk about why I believe trigger warnings are important. Trigger warnings are extremely personal to me. I suffer from generalized anxiety disorder, panic disorder, clinical depression, as well as obsessive compulsive personality disorder. And I am an avid reader, an avid watcher of TV, an avid watcher of movies. One of my favorite books of all time is a book called Girl in Pieces. However, if I had read that book two years ago, right after I came out of a psychiatric hospital, that book would have negatively affected me. Lots of the books I love would have been detrimental to my recovery. The word triggering is used all over the place and a lot of people think it's ridiculous that we ask that reviewers, authors, as well as other forms of media to give warning when things like mental illness, sexual assault, 
addiction to be included in these medias. If I had read these books or seen some of my favorite shows or movies back when I was not in the stage of recovery I am right now, they would have brought back thoughts and behaviors that are not healthy. I think it's amazing that all these authors are bringing awareness to these issues because they're important. But if people in the midst of their recovery are just starting, aren't prepared to hear, read, see these things discussed, then they're going to have the opposite effect than the author or the creator or the, whoever's talking about it wants. It is important to make sure you start any review with a trigger warning. Trigger warnings helped save my life, as ridiculous as that sounds. I want to thank Julia for giving me this opportunity and bringing awareness to the fact that while trigger warnings might be annoying and overused, they are still extremely important. Thank you to everyone watching for allowing me to share why I believe trigger warnings are extremely important. Bye. Hey everybody, my name is Zariah and I'm from the booktube channel Zariah Rose. In my life, um, when I was 16 years old, I was raped and that was how I lost my virginity. So, um, when I personally witness a graphic sexual assault scene, especially when it comes to like films or sometimes in books, um, it immediately brings me back to square one. It can actually completely undo years and years of really, really hard work to overcome my PTSD and put all of that behind me and I can reach a place where I'm extremely healthy and doing great and able to enjoy physical contact with the people I love and that I want to be able to physically hold um, and when I witness something like that, it is kind of like being in that position all over again. The fear you feel is just as real. Um, so anyways, I'm not going to keep rambling because I know that there are other people going to be speaking in this video and I hope that this clip wasn't too long, but that is an example of a real life person who really needs them because it can undo so many years of work in your own journey and for some people that won't be the case but for people that it is to get that trigger and to be living through your experience all over again is crushing and truly no one should have to relive that experience or suffer especially when they're going to see a movie or read a book because they're there to be entertained. The world already is a very difficult place to live in when you are struggling with PTSD and that is just something that is so easy to make better for those people and it really ruins nothing. Those things should not be used as entertainment shock value and thank you for allowing me to share my experience with them and I hope it opens some eyes on how important trigger warnings really are. Bye guys! Trigger warnings are not something you see very often on social media platforms like YouTube and before videos you watch and in books you read and I think it's very important that we have trigger warnings. We have trigger warnings on movies, on TV shows, on the news. They say viewers discretion is advised. That is the exact same thing as a trigger warning. To me a trigger warning is a warning about sensitive or disturbing material that is going to be shown in the video or in the book or whatever you're reading or watching or doing. I think it's very important that the audience is warned about these things so that the audience can prepare themselves or choose to not watch the video. These trigger warnings can include self-harm, suicide, eating disorders, gore and violence, and sexual assault. And there are obviously plenty more. For me personally, I am not as affected if there is or isn't a trigger warning. I'm not as sensitive to those things. I did deal with self-harm for many many years but it doesn't affect me anymore the way it did but I think it is very important for people who are still going through those kind of things to have trigger warnings because it can trigger them to keep doing it or to have like a panic attack and stuff like that and like you just 
that's not okay. I am not sensitive to that kind of thing anymore. If I was still going through that, I would be really sensitive to it. So that's why for me, it wouldn't affect me, but it affects other people. And that is why I think it is so important to have trigger warnings. I just wanted to thank the people again who contributed to this. I appreciate it so, so much. I'll have their channels linked down below. They are a lovely group of ladies and I'd highly recommend checking them out. A lot of courage to open up like that, especially on camera. So I really appreciate the ladies who did, so thank you very much. And again, this was a discussion, so please let me know your thoughts in the comments. I would love to hear what you think about them, your opinion on them. If there's hate, I'll block you. So, <laughs> thank you guys so, so much for watching, and I'll see you super soon with a new video. And if you don't, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, Tumblr. Goodreads. Anyways, thank you guys so, so much. Bye.